Let's rock and roll, boys. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another Nintendo podcast. Direct predictions edition. I'm here with my co-host, Danny Tortelli. Hey. And Austin Cummings. Hey, Matt. Hi, guys. We just spent a long time talking about all things Pokemon, uh, lots of announcements being made um, during a press conference, all of which I had no idea about. Um, So thank you for both educating me on that. But now we're going to do something I enjoy and can actually add a lot to, uh, which is just making... Pika, (laughs) Pika. Pika. (laughs) And um, uh, talking about all our hopes and dreams for the upcoming Pokemon Direct, which is happening on June 5th, next Wednesday, uh, 6 a.m. Pacific Time, 9 a.m. Eastern Time, 8 a.m. Central Time, which means Danny and I are waking up early before work and binge-watching this presentation. And Austin is waking up early before work. All right. Uh, oh, man. Yeah, should, yeah, Austin, too. One of these days, we'll do a here. live reaction uh, podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, so maybe maybe E3. Recently, Nintendo uh, tweeted, posted all the things, um, um, saying, uh, tune in for a roughly 15 minutes of new information on Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield for Nintendo Switch in a live stream Pokemon Direct presentation. So roughly 15 minutes, um, which... As we've seen with Nintendo, they can certainly pack a lot of content into a short Mm -hmm. amount of time. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So here's how the format's going to go. We uh, each been asked to think about three things that we think are going to drop in this direct. Three things that, um, you know, genuine predictions, not our hopes and dreams, which, you know, it could be embedded in our predictions, but genuine predictions that we have. And then, of course, after the direct, we will discuss and see uh, who is, uh, you know, uh, the very best. Okay, so my prediction will be first. <laughs> I predict there will be fire type Pokemon. Oh. All right, who's next? <laughs> Take it back. Take it back. Um, all right, so actually, Austin, uh, oh. you kind of uh, um, uh, kind of sparked this idea in all of us initially uh, and got us uh. got us thinking. So let's actually start with you. Well, uh, Matt, I appreciate that. You know that I am always thinking about Pokemon, and I am very excited <laughs> for this direct. So. Okay, so we talked about this a little bit on the last podcast, talking about the Pokemon press conference for investors. But when we look back at the Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon Nintendo Direct uh, from two years ago, the one that also preceded E3, it can kind of inform us a little bit about the level of details we can look forward to. Now, in that one, um, we got basically nothing. So I do suspect (laughs) that because we've had this lengthy investor uh, meeting, which announced other Pokemon projects in the works, there will probably be more details, but I still expect it to be like kind of light. You know, uh, 15 minutes can go uh, either it can be 15 minutes of packed details like we had for Super Mario Maker just last uh, two weeks ago. Or it can be th- like the last Pokemon uh, Direct, which wasn't even that bad, but it was like, you know, seven minutes long. And it was like a f- four minute trailer of people like walking around oh, and loving Pokemon. And then footage. we saw like three Pokemon. So. I suspect it's going to be more like the latter. Um, And so, yeah, Matt, like you said, these are things that I think we're going to see in the direct, not necessarily things in the game. Like, would I love to see another region in the game, like Johto and Kano? Yes. Would I love to see, um, you know, things of that? But we're so my number, my first prediction, I would like to see um, in this one, I would like to see the first evolutions of our three main starters. Now, I feel like for the most part, we tend to get their final stages. And then they're kind of come in combo. You see all three at once. Often this maybe this is going to be a Famitsu or a Shonen Jump or something that's going to something will include or tease a Pokemon. I would like to just see it rolled out with one at a time. And here's why: I feel like the middle stage. You know, nothing wrong with being a middle sibling. We we're just talking <laughs> no, about that off air. <laughs> but um, on, to go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I do feel like in the world of Pokemon. Um, when you're playing the game, you pick your starter. It's a big choice, right? I personally am always kind of sweating on it. I need to make sure I pick the right one. But then for the most of the game, you're spending the time with the third evolution. You figure they evolve by, let's say, level 32, right? So then most of the game, they're going to be in their final form. You only really get level 16 through level 32 in that, in that kind of awkward teen years, you know? Um, you get mm-hmm. Charmeleon, mm-hmm. Wartortle, Ivasaur. So give them a little more of a platform. I would like to see their first stage evolutions, and I'm hoping we're going to see that there. Okay. All right. 
So some evolutions. Danny, give us your first prediction for what we'll probably see um, in a week. Here we go! What we will probably see. Um, I'm thinking we will probably see um, what else, um, as far as mechanics go, you know, just like what are the new the the new extra evolutions, um, whatever they may be. This is kind of giving it into some of my other hopes and dreams stuff um, that we, we may or may not get to later. Um, but yeah, you know, what will be? Will be armored um, Pokemon. I've seen some concept images of that going with the whole sword and shield concept. Um, we'll probably see what is what is the special thing. Um, is it the Z evolution or whatever they were called um, from the previous games? Um, yeah, so I, I'm expecting that's a big thing that we're going to see. Um, and, I'll, and I'll cut it there because I got some more fun ones I'll share later. Okay, okay. so you're kind of thinking kind of something in, the, in line of Mega Evolutions or Z moves, which are the Sun and There it is. There something it is. along right. those lines. Maybe those, armor yeah. evolutions. People are kind of um, guessing maybe that will be a thing. Or Meltan from Let's Go will make an official appearance in this. Maybe he will be involved in the armor of some kind. That would be cool. Okay, Matt, yeah. take it away. First prediction. All right, so uh, first and foremost, you know, this, this Direct is coming just before E3, and... To me, that is just, um, you know, telegraphing that uh, E3 is going to be dedicated to, to, to a lot more stuff. And that mm-hmm. we traditionally get a direct after, um, you know, like later July and August, especially with, around Pokemon. So they're trying to get all the Pokemon stuff out now, uh, which is why I think that uh, with this recent press conference, we're going to learn a more uh, directly how the home the the home process is mm-hmm. um connected to this switch game um i think though like like danny you mentioned like like the big thing around you know like uh, evolutions or 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 what that 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 kind of new mechanic might be for this game well i think they're going to kind of continue on this like okay this is the the future of uh pokemon gaming um this is how you're gonna this is how this new game ties into all of our other pokemon success um uh because i think they're gonna want to kind of mention that stuff um Mm -hmm. but i think a lot of people are gonna be interested in that especially coming off the heels of this press conference so some sort of pokemon home here's how you're gonna like here's how this new game interacts with our vision of pokemon as a franchise uh, moving forward, so I expect to see some sort of connection between between those two things. Yeah, mm-hmm. and if I might just kind of hop in on that, one of mine was going to be that based off this conference we had just had, that Pokemon Go would have a little bit of a a shout out, or they would mention right. connectivity with that. I think yours is more realistic, Matt. Though they might mention home and at least remind us of that. Right. Show how it's going yeah, to work. Yeah, Pokemon Home. Yeah. Because in theory, um, it would be kind of fun if you were big into Pokemon to think okay well i have until the fall when this game comes out i'm going to go back and maybe pick up ultra sun ultra moon maybe a game you didn't play i'm going to start adding to my currently right. Pokemon bank co- collection knowing that they are going to go in this way maybe they'll have be some incentive for maybe if you move pokemon from pokemon bank it'll give you some type of like special like uh they've done a lot of things in the past where you get a shiny a, I'm a legendary or things like that. There's like, if you go to GameStop, we, there was an ounce or an app now, actually that came out in the last two weeks where uh, it's a Pokemon app. And if you go to target store during special promotions, yep. you'll download a download uh, QR code that then you use in your game to get a shiny Pikachu or Eevee or things like that. And that Got game is Pokemon Eevee pass just this weekend. Ooh. Yep. And so that is cool. And Pokemon pass is the name of the app. And I've just brought it up here on the phone. So I think that's a cool connectivity. I think something like that. But I'm going to choose. I'm not going to choose that for my, um overall thing uh instead i'm going to choose something a little bit different for my second guess so matt you kind of brought up that this is a week before e3 and i think maybe they're going to have something uh big ish that they're going to want to announce and they know it's going to take there'll be enough enthusiasm that it's not going to overshadow the announcements they want to make at e3 it's going to be that large and so kind of on that um, mm-hmm. i think they might go into maybe some of the online play maybe online tournament structure Mm -hmm. um, maybe how it works the nintendo switch app and i think that might we have right now like the super mario maker bundle that includes online service they're trying to beef up nintendo online services wouldn't it be cool if we saw how pokemon works that pokemon relies on a robust internet infrastructure and personally i've never found those mechanics to be very well integrated into the game. So right. um, if that's going to be messaging coming out of Nintendo for E3, this might be a good opportunity to introduce how Pokemon works in that without yeah. getting it lost in the shuffle with our, or getting other things really lost in the shuffle in a week. 
Very cool. Okay, Danny, what's your second prediction? Yeah, I think we're going to just get more definitive stuff compared to what we did in the last Pokemon Direct um, for kind of like my my next two. Um, but for, for this first one is just how will the encounters for sure work? Was it just early footage we saw in the last one and it's not random encounters again? Or will there actually be um, either in the overworld, like in the Let's Go games, or will it be an option? Will it be some kind of tech that you get from Sylph Co that you can see them in the open world? Um, I think that's something we'll just get like clarified one way or another. Yeah, I mean, are we going back yeah. to the old style of games of random encounters? Or are we somehow going to incorporate the Let's Go series where they just made made the Pokemon visible in the overworld? Yeah, it's a my Go ahead. interesting. Oh, yeah, I was to say my huge hope <laughs> is that they make it somehow visible to I see it in think, the open world. I just think there's no way. I I I liked how it worked in Let's Go as well, and I um, found myself actually more encouraged to have like to engage with random quote unquote Pokemon because I was yeah. like, I want this one. I want their candy or whatever. And let's go. Yeah. But yeah. um, in the case of this, I, I want it's a return. Candy. I want the candy. It fuels my life blood. I feel like for this game, the return to form random thing is celebrated. People would be sad, but I, I think there's no way that there aren't random encounters. However, I think it's a clever solution to think, will there be some, extra mechanic where there might also be select ones that occasionally appear or maybe you can make them appear with a special item like the self scope uh, is a great idea mm -hmm. um you know in some of the more recent games like black and white kind of more recent there there were things where like in the tall grass like it would rustle and you know that there's a pokemon in that specific location and that ended up being a big mechanic for like the shiny chaining and whatnot people being able to yeah. predict where a pokemon would appear in the grass and um I do wonder, it would be neat to see something where they could. Uh, the big benefit you got also from Let's Go is it gave you a sense of that these Pokemon are really in the world because you saw them running right, around. Right, you saw, right. You saw it's way more common. It felt more lived in, which is the fun of Detective Pikachu the movie. It's the fun of Detective Pikachu the 3DS game. You see Pokemon in the world. Whereas I remember playing uh, Pokemon red and blue and there was when you go to like the school, there'd be kids playing Game Boy in those areas and they're like learning how to play Pokemon. Uh, like yeah, little it was a little too sprites. meta <laughs> and i was so confused i was like a yeah, part of me was like yeah too meta i was like is am i playing a game playing a game in this or are they just yeah. too young <laughs> but my character is only 10 so they're not that young like or old the um it just was you know confusing in that way and so then when you have pokemon really popular and it feels like a living breathing world that i think you do lose a little bit with random encounters maybe there'll be some way to introduce a little of both but i think it'll be largely rando yeah I and I hope so because you you just said that that feature with the grass was X and Y. Um, yeah, I think or, it was black and white, but it does. I'm or not black sure. and white. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, I just feel like that's that's no no Pokemon pun intended. I feel like that's just like a healthy evolution of the series of like, I I get it and like there is that nostalgia to like the 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 older games of like you never know what you're gonna run into mm -hmm. and also that nostalgia of like. I'm in this cave. How many more freaking Zubats can mm -hmm. I run into? The answer is um, a lot. <laughs> right but but and the other thing is like it still wasn't a hundred percent like better i mean there were still plenty of times even in let's go that i'm running into them even, even as i'm trying to avoid them yeah um i and, and i loved seeing them in the world i love seeing them like being like they were part of that universe so yeah i'm i guess this is kind of on that borderline of what i expect to get the full answer is it in overworld or not and also just kind of leaning into my hopes and dreams of i really hope we could see them in the open in the uh, overworld but we shall see mm -hmm. okay all right so uh my second prediction is going to be that they're going to detail um kind of a a, a new i guess i you know this would be like a not necessarily a bombshell for pokemon but they're gonna announce a new type um mm -hmm. that's going to be introduced in this region um i don't know mm -hmm. what's like, what that's going to be um but i feel like that's something that constantly keeps the the franchise fresh introduces new st strategy um i know that a lot of the pokemon fandom have been speculating about new types and theorizing about new types forever um so i'm not going to try to go into what that might be but one theory that i've like heard and have, have either read on reddit or have, like talked to other pokemon fans about is this idea of like crossbreeding types um and what that might do um in terms of like as a, like a game mechanic again that's mm. not necessarily a prediction but i half clefairy half gyarados i'm in mm -hmm. <laughs> but like but like like are there certain pokemon that you could like 
you know, crossbreed and to, to create a new particular type. I don't know. Um, but it, I, either way, I do think we're going to see some sort of new form. Yeah, I mean, uh, in Sun on. and Moon, we had fairy type was new, and that was like, kind of introduced into the right. strategy of the game because dragon types, their only weaknesses were dragon, which they were also strong against, so it wasn't a huge weakness. And then also, um, <laughs> and then just ice, which so they didn't have many weaknesses, and they're traditionally very powerful Pokemon. And so fairy type strong as dragon, it helped kind of shake that up. Right. And it would be cool to see something along those lines, just whether it's a new type or new set of moves, um, because like, for instance, the fairy pool, of moves is kind of low and the other thing is you don't um you know a, a long running joke with like the fire starter is that the final form will be fire fighting because we had blaziken and infernape right. um we're mm-hmm. both of that type the dual type set and you know how when how often do we get fire water like even something as simple right. as that makes it more interesting and fun so mm. um just or getting weird like it'd be cool if one of the starters like the grass guy is like you know grass rock these combinations you don't tend to see um, and I can't even think of off the top of my head uh, as being common combo. So those types of things, they make you think differently about types of weaknesses, and that's a lot of fun. That's that's kind of what I meant about like crossbreeding, right? You have grass and you have rock and you have Make ground, them kiss. And you have ground, right? Like, mm-hmm. is, or like, why can't that then yeah. be, why can't that become like earth type? Like, like it's like a, a yeah, whole so new, bre- you know, like, a mega type not even not you know, a mega type just like the only way to get this no type it's a mega is... type Matt. that's what we're calling it now yeah. well it's true and then also like you think of the abilities right so in the core games yeah. the pokemon have uh, abilities like what if um in some of the games there was like the in black and white again there was like the dream realm which you got through connecting to nintendo wi-fi right. uh connection and then you were able to get certain pokemon with special abilities that can only be achieved in that exclusive way right that's pretty cool if you consider um like, you know, the abilities and the way they can change the meta. What if, yeah, what if there's some type of other neat, surprising way of doing something kind of like that, getting special versions of right. those things? A big rumor right now for Pokemon Go is that there'll be an armored Mewtwo coming out because there's a remake of the Pokemon, the first movie. Right. That's the CG version of the movie. That is going to have an Ooh, armored Mewtwo. Right. The code is in there for Pokemon Go. That is a suspicion for one of the next raid Pokemon. But that type of thing where it's like you take a Pokemon you're love and you give them a cool twist. That is what I loved about the Alolan Pokemon back in Sun and Moon, which was like, I love Raichu. Here's right. Alolan Raichu. He's different. He has different moves. He looks totally different, but he's, he's still relaxed, a Pokemon I know? love yeah. and care about and need. And um, and so I, <laughs> he's very he's very relaxed. It was like catch a wave. Um, and the, Jabra. I like that. I like doing twists on things we already know. Right, and I, like I said, like the, the, the kind of I think mm-hmm. they're going to find a way to make this game fresh, and whatever that's going to look like is going to show up, um, you know, next week. So mm-hmm. round three, here we go. Now this is just predictions, things we absolutely think are probably going to happen, and then we'll get into our hopes and dreams. But first, finish this round, Austin. What's your final prediction? I would for- just say final prediction would be I think there's going to be in the same way that I random encounters. I feel strongly are back. I would like to see some traditional gyms in. Sun and Moon, it was very underwhelming. They tried to mix it up to their credit, but it was like instead of gyms, you would go into these little areas and it'd be like, hey, look, it would be like a little mini game, essentially. They had battling components, but you'd fight wild Pokemon, not trainers. And it would be mm-hmm. like, hey, you need to find three mushrooms and you do it by clicking A on these little holes. And then you'd be then you'd fight a big version of a basic Pokemon, opposed to even fighting like a, a gym leader. And so right. it, it although I appreciate that it was different, some of them were frankly very juvenile there'd be one where it's like which marowak doesn't match the two others and it was like a very <laughs> easy um a little like you know site i guess uh finding minigame and then the and i will say something i really liked about a surprise of pokemon let's go so pokemon let's go remake the originals basically all the gems are the same however the way they redid the workings of blaine the seventh gym leader that evolved yeah, volcano fire I just did I, that one yeah so in the original game it was still like you did these little quiz questions and if you got it wrong you had to fight a guy so it still maintained that but it it totally <laughs> just like changed real life. just like real life i fight him fight a dude but <laughs> in the in pokemon let's go the way they did it was like it was there was these cameras crews there's a live studio audience you go up you fight blaine it's like a game show they like totally reworked how that gym looks and yeah. then you took blaine would quiz you it was like very zany they're blaine dolls blaine's character looks mm-hmm. very he, he's a, f- a funny character because he's like a 
he's an old man with this giant mustache and, <laughs> yeah. and huge spectacles and um he just not the kind of person you imagine as like a tv personality but to see it reframed that way was like super fun um right. and I would like a little twist like that on current gyms, but I would like to see a return of gyms. So fighting trainers and having that prestige moment of like you, you know, the curtain draws back at the end. Um, Pokemon Let's Go also does that a great job with this in the final gym where it's like you fight all the normies and then you have this big moment where it shows the gym leader who is responsible for that typeset in that gym and they you have this big confrontation and they strike a cool pose. I I like that and I hope that is shown to return. Okay. Very cool. All right, Danny. Yeah, I think we're going to see as far as uh, again, just as far as mechanics go, will we have to train specific Pokemon for those specific um, uh, TMs like Cut or no, Surf the HMs, or yeah, yeah the HMs? I'm sorry. Um, again, another huge advancement that was very much appreciated mm-hmm. by myself, at least for Let's Go. Was yeah. that and no, was all, it was in Sun and Moon as well. They did mm. a little version. It wasn't the exact same, but they did something like that. gotcha. So there were gotcha. not. So I really hope that is shown. Okay, good because I remember just in the older game. So to to be honest, I never played Sun Moon Ultra Sun Ultra Moon. Right. Um, at that That's point, right. I'd already sold my 3ds to make sure I could afford the Switch. Okay, now you've gone too far. Um, Don't talk about it anymore. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but uh. Uh, yeah, no, I, I'm I'm really hoping that that is something that's continued because I just remember in the older games that was the such worst. a pain in the yeah, butt. Yeah, you loaded um, up a normie Pokemon with all the HMs they could carry, and it was just one waste on your team. And yeah, I right. agree. Yeah, so uh, hopefully we get some kind of answer on that. Yeah, we'll I hope so too. Okay. Um. Okay. My. I mean, again, this is gonna sound pretty boring, but I think we're going to. Def- definitively Not find Pikachu. out i think pikachu is going to be in this one Pe- electric type de- <laughs> that's two predictions uh i hope i hope do you well i'll get into this later I, i'm curious to see if there'll be any sort of alolan creatures at all in this new game um and if you can bring them in with pokemon home like is like mm-hmm. have we seen alolan creatures outside of the alola region like uh, yet in they, let's go you can trade people who are like i'm from there i'll trade you a right you from uh, alolan right you oh interesting very Which cool. Is cool um and you can bring the alolan version of any of the 151 in from go I think. right assuming it works like that you would be able to yeah so my my prediction is that we're going to find out definitively what the sword and shield are uh how they relate to my pred- my actual prediction is that they're they're both just these they both represent parts of the same Pokemon, same legendary. Mm-hmm. Um, one legendary. Are, just one legendary. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And or two that both have a sword in the shield. But I think they're like, I feel like there's like two pieces of this like legendary Pokemon. Um, but I do think that we're going to find out exactly like, OK, that this is what that 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 legendary is going to be. Um, oh, that makes sense. Why that's a sword and that's a shield. And everyone's going to buy sword. Um, because the logo looks cooler. Um, <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> wow. Wow. Although um, Cap has told us that shields are cool, so he made shields cool. Circular yeah, it's not shields. the sword that's guarding the realms of men. No. Jeez, God, get it. Yeah, right, whatever. So true. <laughs> the sword's in the dark, <laughs> Danny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so actually, that makes me think of something interesting. Do you think it'll actually be armored evolutions, or do you think, as with Alolan versions, there will be like, galarian versions yeah. of pokemon so it'd be like just a galarian charizard i guess what would you um, prefer i'm yeah uh ooh, charizard with ooh. a kilt and um and a bagpipe, a bagpipe. yeah mm-hmm. right yeah <laughs> and, Why is uh, he? war paint and uh not, not gaelic charizard galarian charizard <laughs> so okay um, that that was interesting and initially i was like i was thinking like whoa what if this like what if this this whole thing is about like uh a war or like it goes into this like ancient war that took place in this region and it kind of the the story mm-hmm. itself explores that that history um which i maybe could be tied into some armored pokemon or a way to ar- i don't know but it's a song of fire and ice type pokemon that'd be cool yeah <laughs> nice I, I, I like that ice type yeah that's good um, with that thank you for this. uh <laughs> not gonna get better than that so um yeah, yeah i i guess what would what would you guys prefer you had to choose? Would you prefer a special armored version of Pokemon or a slightly reworked set of existing Pokemon that 
had just like a different like the fun thing of the Alolan form was it did mix up the, the typeset. So for the case right. of, for example, Vulpix and then Ninetales, Ninetales was ice and fairy. So it was a totally different than fire. Uh, and mm-hmm. that was a totally, you know, we had never had a combo like that. We hadn't even had fairy. Um, and so that was very fun. I, I'm thinking fairy was since on a moon, but I'm sorry if I'm wrong. The uh, I'm sure no one will call me out. I'm sure my mom will call me out. <laughs> the, um, but the, uh, in the case of, of this, I think it would be fun to have to keep that tradition going of the Alolan form with Galian forms. And then what I liked was it was a way to reuse the original 151 because mm-hmm. I adore Pokemon, but the original 151 is very tired now. Like Pokemon Go was all we had for basically a year, Whoa. right? Whoa. Like um, in Pokemon Let's Go, we just had that remake. I, I just feel very close to those Pokemon all the time. And I'm more excited right. about new ones at this point. Like, and mm-hmm. I loved Pokemon Black and White back on the DS because in that game, you had to play through the entire game in the Elite Four with the whole new 150 set of Pokemon in that game. They had a huge, huge number of Pokemon, whereas like the Sinnoh region only has 100 Pokemon, other things, but it doesn't matter. Um, but you had to play through with all the new Mons, and once you beat it, you unlocked the ability to transfer in and also uh, catch the legacy Pokemon. And um, I liked that a lot because it, it got me out of my comfort zones. Because a lot of these games I go through and I'm like, well, I know I want Charizard or like Alakazam. Mm-hmm. Even when I played Let's Go, and I'm sure Danny, you have a similar experience. Like my team has Bulbasaur's Evolution Chain, Charmander, and Venusaur because they're given to you. Like all of those, um, you know, Bulbasaur, uh, all of those Pokemon are given to oh, you. So yeah. it's like you want to, you know, I use them. I use Pikachu. That was four of my six. It just wasn't like a very inventive team you know i like yeah. doing something a little weirder if i battled a friend in let's go i know i'm gonna fight their blast toys charizard and venusaur so um right but i liked reimagining the original 151 in the alone context and it'll be fun to see other pokemon that don't have a lot of love like tangela and tangle growth for example licking tongue and lickety lick lickety the evolution Licky of that split. like those pokemon have maybe put a little twist on their design their type set that would be interesting to me. That'd be a way to reinvigorate some of those classics. Mm-hmm. That would be mm-hmm. like, oh, it'd be kind of fun to check out a t- like a Tangela that's fire type and he's like all in flames or whatever. Like that could be pretty neat. Like I would maybe have that on the team, but regular Tangela, we've done our time. Okay. I have a question. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. Would you all like to see, uh, having played some of the new or Pokemon games, Austin specifically, like are you looking for any sort of like like major improvement in the in the way like multiplayer uh happens communication happens with other players like like uh easier way to connect uh or your or just to jump in with someone and do something else other than battle but to have some other component that you can like do together i would just like um separate from the online and i know that uh, danny you even put this on on the google doc you said just like having other tasks and activities to do um, yeah and do you want to talk about that at all or yeah I, I i one of my hopes and dreams to to not segue too too much was just talking about how i hope in the direct we learn how open worldy this game is yeah um i i have long since buried the the dream of this being the breath of the wild version of pokemon i i realize that's just too too high and <laughs> too far reaching um of of ex- expectations but to that extent can it be a little bit more open yeah. world like than previous Pokemon right. games? Maybe just a, and we know like know, the camera's a, a little two. more dynamic looking. It's not just a straight top down. Right, like, that'd be a good way to maybe yeah yeah on. yo yeah no exactly. And I was gonna say and and maybe there's just a few more side missions that could benefit the main story, but don't necess- aren't necessary for the main story. Yeah. You know, just a few more when, little things like that. When uh, you play through Pokemon now, it's like you go through just the the main beats, the gym to gym to gym, and then the you know, of course, scripted um, encounters with the villain team. Um, but and the only things in between are, frankly, like the occasional person who's like, I'll trade you, you know, for my Farfetch'd and things or my Haunter right. and Everstone, like things like that where are not, you don't. Know, it's there are not like side missions. And it um, and Sun and Moon really suffered from this. Sun and Moon, I think, is one of the best Pokemon games in, um, in the series have, for having a really well lived in world and neat characters. But it's yeah. it has a it's hugely linear. Like not only is the game just like uh, Hawaii, like it has set islands, but um, you have your Pokedex in the game. The Rodom decks, Rodom is a Pokemon, 
it is very yeah. chatty and is constantly being like, we need to go here. And then it'll kind of yeah. very much direct you. You'll go there and it's like, now you need to go here. And it's extremely linear. And, you know, when I played Pokemon as a young person, uh, the world felt big, you know, even if yeah. it w- even if you right. were guided through ultimately, ultimately around the map, the um, uh, it still felt large. And I would like this to take more risk. It'd be fun to have side missions that were like, Someone's like, I need you like, you know, we're have we're overrun with Rattata. I need you to go catch 10 or something or like and then it right. cre- it culminates in like, wow, here's a, a Rattata with a special move or a special ability or a yeah, chance to shiny, shiny Rattata right. or some little weird quest or and that would be a great way to implement the online stuff. Like, I love that about Pokemon Go is always one event to the next at this point. Like you're always immediately into the next event. It's always exciting to be like, I'm um, getting tired of this event, but it's only ever lasts about a week. And now here's the new one. Like, yeah. And if this game had some type of online connectivity with that, where it's like, hey, for this week, um, you know, all grass type Pokemon are going to have this ability or again, these other ideas like or this legacy Pokemon that otherwise wasn't really in the game. Um, so let's say all, all of a sudden Doug Trio or Diglett was not really in the game very much. And then it's it's there in this one cave for one week. You know, that would be really cool. That'd be yeah. a reason to hop in. Um, you look at even Smash Bros. Ultimate, like it has the the rotating different boards you can do for the spirit icons. And that's cool. They're themed differently. I like I love Castlevania. It'll be like Castlevania board. I'm like, oh, really fun to see how they re-envision these battles for these Castlevania characters I love. But they're they don't feel that significant, right? I don't really have a good way of showing that off to another friend. I don't have like a sticker book they can look at that shows all my spirits. Like right, but right. with this, if I was like, oh, like, did you guys hop in and get Pikachu has tons of different cosmetic looks like the Pikachu that had this special like um, it had glasses that said 2020 or something like that for the New mm-hmm. Year's event. Like just something cute and small like that. Pokemon Go does a good job of those types of things. Have that in this game, too. That would keep the online community feeling really alive. And I hope that in this where we're going to see their rollout plan for the online stuff and it's going to be new. It's not going to be just like sitting in a lobby. It's not going to be right a really strange bizarre messaging system or like shop system the way the other or like mall the way the previous games have done it which is just it's very clunky um that would be like great to see it feel so, more living. yeah so that you touched on something that i've been thinking about for a while which is uh, like tangle i've uh, tangla <laughs> and licky lick and mm-hmm. all of them we can um, talk about that off air i, I can help you through it <laughs> oh, oh god uh, behind the p so mm-hmm. what <laughs> pokemon go has become this you know, international phenomenon where a lot of people who have a lot of nostalgia for Pokemon are finding a reason to go out and to stay engaged with this with this franchise in a way that's very unique and fresh and and has nothing to do with the mainline games and and the draw that those have. Are as people who play Pokemon Go, is there a part of Pokemon Go that you're like, I, when you look at a mainline game now, like um, you know. A sword and shield coming coming soon are you, are you thinking like oh that's gonna be fun but it, it's not gonna have these like fun like social like elements of pokemon go that i've like grown to really love and are you gonna feel like okay well that was a fun adventure now back to go like do you are you afraid that's gonna be the case because i like you said austin i'm really hoping that this game is one of those like longer lasting things especially for players like me who don't play go but want to be in this game over time for a while um i don't know what are, what are your thoughts on that like yeah that's a good question i i you know i'll certainly continue to play go during the time like it's part of my daily ritual which is fun is like yeah Danny and i make friend progress to pokemon go or like i go and collect some things or like i look forward to going on a jog and getting these things or i'm like every day like am i gonna hit a lucky friendship with this person i'm gonna go meet up mm-hmm. with this buddy as so we can trade a rare pokemon like um I think that the trouble Pokemon will find is I think they ultimately don't want it to be a full service game because Pokemon is an annual franchise. And so, yeah. you know, will we get Pokemon Axe or something, you know, helmet or something, you know, next year? I Shin Guard, I would, think, actually. When, <laughs> excuse me. Yes, I, I forgot about the leak. Yeah, um, the I you expect you will. And so but for as long as this one is relevant, it would be nice to have reasons to check in on it because i'm never going to be a competitive player in this way like i have a lot of fun pokemon go collecting the best pokemon i can going to the raid with my buddies being and showing off like i have the best move set this one has a really good iv um 
you know, that's fun to contribute in a cooperative way, but I'm not as interested in playing PvP. And for Pokemon, traditionally, I don't think it's likely my buddies and I are going to get around and we're going to like square off with their teams. It would be awesome if we did, but I think it'd be more fun to have events that got us talking that were like, get out there. Right. Do you guys know that Giovanni is in the Galia region or whatever for a week? Like kind of yeah. almost Animal Crossing-ish, yeah. right? Like what if he and Team Rocket right. are like, they crash land in this area and you can go fight him for a week. You get a shiny Meowth. Like that would be fun. And then when this game is kind of retired in probably about two years when whatever next thing supplants it, like I'll have those Pokemon, I'll put them into bank. My collection will grow. I'll be able to point to these special events and say, and think like, yes, I got these things. And then we'll go on to the next one. Like that's the type of integration I like to see Pokemon and gaming in general. It's all about collecting. I'd like to see them mm-hmm. do things with that. Um, so that but generally you're, important. you're excited though, for this, this new mainline game that you can carry around your switch. And I, I, assuming it has these go like elements of introducing new events and things. I don't even think like, um, I'm ex- totally excited for it. I think I'm excited for it because I've been playing so much Go and I've been enjoying just Pokemon as a property and looking. I yeah. I feel excited to play a traditional game again. Yeah. Um, I don't think I need like friends progress. I don't want so many systems that are already in Go because I already have that and I don't want to double. Right. It. But it would be fun right. to capitalize on the best parts of Go, which are the events, the exclusive things, and right. interesting ways to build your collection. They've already played with that. We talked about the Pokemon Pass for Target. And, mm-hmm. but more interesting ways like that, where it's like, go get this thing, right? Go get the yeah. special Mon, it's available. But make it more interesting than going to GameStop and getting a mystery gift. Make it something I can do in the game, some event space or something really yeah. crazy appears. Like I played a lot of Destiny and Destiny 2, right? Destiny, you'd go to the tower and all of a sudden, everything was Halloween event. You know, everything was uh, covered in snow. And it was like, they had these big, moments where uh, i don't think pokemon's yeah. gonna get big dlc drops but they those events many of those are free too valentine's day event, everything's you know there's new things to do there's new cosmetics things look different yeah. um in general like make that again kind of like animal crossing i'm uh, making the world and splatoon ways to get things really yeah, true uh danny so so obviously same question that you've been uh marinating in uh my initial question for a little bit so same same goes for you are you excited just because you want to jump into a new mainline game uh are you afraid that like it's not going to capture your attention the same way that go has or are you actually the opposite are you more like no 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 actually i'm all about main lines go's great but it's not it's not my cup of tea yeah no i mean like i obviously i love go and it's like it's just a daily routine thing that's just like a nice little like uh it entertains me and also makes me feel like i'm doing something and just like my commute and you know stuff like that um as far as like how sociable will it be like yeah like i've connected with austin i've connected with like some of my actual um other real life friends yeah, i've careful, met careful. one person <laughs> random no no yeah i'll include you real you know, i think actually real real friends I uh, re- let me re- let me put it this way um i would actually send you that text message if i found mm-hmm. something fun and exciting mm-hmm. but uh you know, oh. I'll just that, all right uh, thanks for listening to the final episode of another new <laughs> podcast you know we were just going to buy southwest tickets to uh, and... right 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 there it is thank god it's southwest so we can cancel but um <laughs> calling aside Mr. West from right now. <laughs> connecting with the friends i already have um i've met one person you know like a stranger playing this game that i've actually become a friend with like in the game it's not like i'm expanding and becoming you know we all have giant social lives now because of this it's it's nice and it, mm-hmm. you know um i'm actually looking forward to just the mainline game having its attachments where it needs to be having its connections and and little right. benefits where it needs to be i'm looking for just like an immersive uh kind of cut away from the web right. off the grid yeah. just give me an immersive story um and and side stories and side quests and explorative you know kind of things um Fun, exploration things. Gameplay. there we go and i i think so everything what i agree with you danny and austin to your point like i want and in gaming especially on the switch uh and this has been an issue with nintendo is i just want to be able to show things off you know i want something to be able to be like look how many look at my like yeah. special gym badge i got or look at you know uh all of my uh like s ranks in war groove or yeah. i wish there was more ways to show off what i've done even though i did it on my own to my friends and i hope that pokemon 
get, having the you know the reach that it does uh, with the gaming audience that they start to introduce more of those things. And if they don't have those there, if I can't, like maybe it is through the phone app and your friends on your phone that can, you know they could they can kind of check uh, in through the Nintendo Online sphere. If that's not the case, though, I do at least want these events because it creates a conversation, um, you know, in in the fandom, and I think that's ultimately just as satisfying to be able to get on with your buds well your buds who text you when things happen uh, all right team it was one Man, the ios app flaming would stay cool um, but but i love that every other piece of nintendo news sent to their group um yeah Thank agreed. The lord i agree and i'm in the wrong and i know it i'm sorry um, let, let it out man no but I'm, i i hope that that is the case because uh it is fun you know and and uh, and when i was like in the height of my splatoon playing days i actually i really enjoyed uh the different uh, like the oh my god which yeah. tire are you gonna choose ninja turtles or you know rugrats i don't know uh well, what if that were one what if whoa um, wow Chucky but, v oh. Ralph. <laughs> yeah, I like it. v Donnie. Let's go. <laughs> let's go. So, um, yeah, I, I really hope that's the case, and I, I that's my biggest hope and wish of the the direct next week is that they do show off. Like, here's the big social element. Clearly, this is a big part of Pokemon at this point, um, <gasps> and here's how you're gonna get that. So, yeah. Uh, Quick Anything one. else before we wrap this up, guys? No? Nope. Any yawns from the crowd? No, no, no. No, oh, oh. no just, just crickets. Whatever the cricket Pokemon is, they're, they're singing. Cricket New tune, type. baby. Catch them now. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, thank you for joining us for our Nintendo Direct Predictions podcast. This has been another Nintendo podcast. Um, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you all uh, six months from now. All right. Have a good <laughs> one, everyone. <laughs> Be good to each other. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.